Hello friends of the electrified charging farm and welcome to Speicher Elektrisiert, your channel all around Skoda's e-mobility. My name is Matthias and today this video is all about the key. Yes, you heard it right. It's about the Skoda Enyaq car key and the remote. And if you think, what can you tell me about this? I know how this works. So I would say just watch the video. Maybe you learn something new and maybe you learn something what happens if you got problems with this key and how to solve it. So let's kick it off. In this video we will look at the functions of this key and not all the function this key and the remote has are documented in the manual so there might be the other thing one or the other thing which is helpful for you and as well we talk about what for troubleshooting is awaitable if this key does not really work, if you have an empty battery and stuff like that. But there is another thing when it comes to this key and this is that in previous M uh, software versions of the EMIAC, I mean the ME2, this key stored information about settings of the driver like seat position, mirror position and stuff like that. And back in those days when you entered the car and opened the car with the key it sets these positions. So since you've got two keys you could use it with two persons with different settings. Because back in the days with ME2 there were no profiles. Then with the software version 3 they introduced the profiles, the, re the online remote profiles. And what did they do? They removed the function that the key is paired with a profile. Now when you've got software version 3 or higher you do not have the data like seat position, mirrors and co on this key. And also this key or its ID is not paired with a profile. That's why you get the message hello driver and not hello Matthias like in my case. And that's why you have to select a profile from the main display or hit OK to say this is my profile. And that's completely different to the combustion engine cars of Škoda like the Superb, the Kodiak or the Octavia where this key is paired with a profile. I don't have any clue why this does not work with the ENYAQ because it would be highly convenient if you could pair a key with a profile so when you open the car with the key it will recognize that you are profile whatever in my case profile Mats, and already do all the settings and already greet me personal. And one might say now yeah but with the profiles even more people could use the car with their own settings. But to be honest, how many drivers does an ENYAQ in everyday use have? One or two? Like, to be honest, most of the time the ENYAQ is driven by one or two people mainly and therefore you got enough keys. And all other users could still select a profile from the setting. So I don't know why this feature is no longer available to pair a key with a profile and it would be highly convenient to get this feature back. So I really hope Skoda will deliver that. When your car keys are empty you get the message in your cockpit display that you should replace the battery as shown here in the video and as well you get a message here in the status information of your vehicle. You see I've got one report here and this report says please replace key battery. And how do you replace the battery? Well this is something I show you in the next chapter of this video. Besides the warning in your ENYAQ that the battery is low in your key, you also have an indicator light on your key. It's just up here and I'll show you. If I press on the empty key, you don't see any light. And if I press on this key, you see this red light flashing. And as long as this light is flashing, the battery is still good. So this key is empty. And if you're asking what happens to my thumb here, well, that was an accident while working in the garden and now it needs some time to heal and therefore it looks a bit rampaged. <laughs> if you now want to exchange the empty battery on the key you could watch this video or read just the manual where everything is listed how to do it. And the manual says you should remove this spare key a bit and then just half out of it. Why does it say so? Because they use it as a lever to get this cover of the key. 
I, uh, I don't want to do this and it's not necessary. So leave the spare key in your remote. Turn the remote around and remove this plastic cover. If you go down here with your nail, it's quite simple to do so, as you can see, and it's already removed. And there you can see is the battery of the key. It's a CR2032, just like this one. This is my new battery. And now to remove the battery, it's best to use a screwdriver because then you can get better in here, push it a little bit back and upward and it's right out of the key. I wouldn't use the screwdriver to remove the cover because you may scratch it. Then just insert the new battery, slide it in and attach the cover again, quite easy, just clip it on. And as you can see, the key is now working, the red light is already flashing. And as you can see, after changing the battery, you do not have to do anything. You can just open the car, it still knows the key and the warning has disappeared. No more warnings here. And so that is basically everything you need to do when you want to change the battery in your car keys. But there may occur some problems with the car keys that it does not recognize your car key and also shows up an error message like this. And what to do with this, I'll show you next. You might once get a message in your ENIAC that the key was not recognized. It will show up in the cockpit display. I cannot show you right now because I rarely got those messages. I guess it was once or twice since I have my ENIAC now for two years. And if this happens, this is quite easy. Just stick your car key here where you put your beverages and it will be recognized. That's the workaround. It's quite easy and handy and the message should disappear. Of course, if the battery is empty, then the message can't disappear. So that's why I showed you before how to change the battery. And once you did this, uh, you have to do nothing. But in any case, you get the message here that the key is not recognized. Just put it here and everything should be fine. I'm outside of my ENIAC and there is one thing that might occur with the key which is really nasty. That is that this key isn't anymore any longer synchronized with your ENIAC. So you can't use it with your ENIAC. Nothing will happen. This might occur if you press these buttons too often outside of the reach of the ENIAC where the ENIAC recognizes the key. So if this happens to you, there is a way to synchronize the key again and therefore you need to open the ENIAC manually. But there is no place to put the key in and that I'll show you later on. So if you have this situation where the key is not synchronized anymore, please be reminded this is not that it is not recognized anymore. There's a difference. If it's not synchronized, open up the door part here that you have access to the lock, then pull out the emergency key. I show you before, it's just pressing the button here, pull it out. And then the procedure is as follows. You press one button on your remote and then you have one minute to open the car with this key and then the key, the remote is synchronized again. Maybe once in a time you really get into this sticky situation that the ENIAC won't open with the remote and won't open with Cassie like it is right now. And if this happens, you need the emergency key and you need to know how to apply it. Because right now you don't see any lock where you could put the key in. And here comes the tricky part. To access the lock, you need to remove this plastic cover. And you're doing this by pulling this handle forward so that this part of the handle is not covering this tiny little plastic thing. And then you have a hole beneath here where you could put in the emergency key. And then just pull it forward to remove this plastic part. And just to be clear, be really careful on this because you easily scratch the paint of the car. And now you can see the lock of the ENIAC. And as you can see, this is the plastic part. There is the hole where you put the key in. And now you can open the ENIAC manually. Just put the emergency key into the lock, turn it counterclockwise and the ENIAC is open. 
and if you turn it clockwise, the ENIAC is locked again. Then just put this cover on again. Please be aware that you again need to pull the handle so that you get it really fitted on. And as you can see now, it's not perfectly fitted. So be careful when you do so that it is really, really <coughs> good attached. You might also want, as you can see here, uh, it's really, really bad to do this. And still it's not really on it. Now it has clicked, now it is good. And as you can see, it is really easy to scratch the paint. So just do this if you really need it and not just for fun. I'll just make this part quick because you all know the functions of this key, I guess. So you have three buttons here, one for closing the car, one for opening the car and one for opening the trunk. What else you can do with these buttons you will learn in this video. Also, you've got a control light in the upper corner here. You might see it right now blinking, which shows you that the battery is still good. Then on this side of the car key on the remote, you have the release button for the emergency key which is below here, where you could also attach some key rings. And if you want to release it, just press the button. You see it clicked out and pull it out and you're done. If you do not need the key holder here, you could put it inside the key by just pressing on it and then you have a clean and smooth key. If you want it out again, just press the emergent key release button and there you go, you can use it again. On the back, you have a Skoda logo, which has no function at all. You can press it as much as you want. And of course, the remote is necessary if you want to use Cassie, the keyless entry. You need to have the key with you so that it could correspond with the car. When it comes to the key, you may already know all of this, what I'm showing you here, because I guess that's common knowledge. But just to make this video complete, I'll show you that. Of course, you know that you can open and close the ENYAC with the buttons when you, single, when you do a single press on it. But you can also do a longer press on the buttons to open the sunroof and the windows. And as you can see, I'm just pressing it longer and the windows are all open now. And if I hit the close button for a longer period of time, they all close again. Of course, you can stop while pushing to just open them halfway. I'll show you right now. And now they are not completely open. And just for demonstration purposes on the rear latch, if you put it a bit longer, your finger on this, you see it opens remotely, does this beepy thing. And if you want to close this, just press it longer again and you can see it will close again. I already released the button because otherwise than the windows, you cannot stop it anywhere. It will always go fully open or fully closed. The key also comes quite handy when you get this situation, you might already know. Maybe you have seen my road trip video, I'll link it up here, where this happens to me, that your charging cable keeps locked even after you have stopped charging and opened the car. Like I did here, the car is open, but the cable is stuck in the charging port. In this case, just, just press the opening button of the car twice quite fast, like this. And then you can easily remove the charging cable again. This works like charm. I never had any problems to release a charging car cable with this method. I never had to use the emergency release in the trunk. It is important to know that you can only release the cable when there is no current anymore. So the charging procedure has to stop before, but it doesn't matter how you stop it. When you got this problem shown here, just double press the opening button on your remote and you can remove the charging cable. Since this plastic remote with its glossy finish is quite uh, <clears throat> easily to scratch, a lot of you use covers for your keys. So do I, you might remember this one, which I am using since nearly two years. And I quite often get the question, what cover do you use, where to get it? And um, I'll just show you two covers I used. I'll stick with this one. 
for a long time now. These are also great, but I don't like the look. And of course there are way more covers available in leather and metal and whatever you like, but let's stick with those. You find affiliate links down in the description if you want to support me and you need such a key cover. So this rubbery piece, you can see the quality is not the best. Uh, as you can see here, uh, it's not manufactured that well, but it does the job for its price. You just stick the key in and put it over. It's not that hard to do, but it is quite tight. So the key is well protected and you can use all the buttons on the key and you can also see the Skoda logo on the back. And of course you can release the emergency key still uh, with this cover. The only backdraw of this cover, you do not see the light of the remote to know when it's empty. And here is the same cover as a white version. And yes, it's in daily use for two years and therefore it still looks quite good. Then there is another cover. This is this cover here, this has the glossy finish like the original key. And as you can see, the fingerprints are all over it. And I'll just show you quickly how this works. You can remove the back cover, just put the key in here and put on the back cover again. And you're already done. This key has the advantage that you can see the battery low warning light. You can access all the buttons. You can also release here the emergency key and you see the logo, but you see all the fingerprints all over it. And the quality as well is not the best, but it does its job. So these are the covers I use, mainly this one. And maybe there is something for you, which you like to have to cover your key. If you like this video and maybe you even learned something new about this key, then please leave a thumbs up. And if you might know something about the key, which I didn't mention, then write it down in the comments. And if this video was helpful for you, please leave a subscription to help this channel grow or even think about a donation for me to support my work. I would be really grateful for this. And then we'll see each other in the next video. And until then, stay full of energy.